Hi everyone, welcome back to Creatively Crafted Life. This is Melanie and I am bringing you part three in my home decor project, which is this winter wonderland deer scene that I'm making a shadow box of. So previously we've painted and prepped the, the shadow box, we've added lights, and now it's time to add all the different layers. So as I mentioned in the previous uh, video, I was concerned about the seam where I had to connect the um, the starry night bit. And um, so I thought I would use these birch trees in order to mask the seam. And in hindsight, I would have just skipped this. Um, by the time you add enough layers onto your project, you would not even see the seam. So I've included the footage in here because that's what ended up in the end package or the end product. But um, I would just skip that because the scale is a little bit off. Um, like I think it works okay-ish, you know, they look like just really tall trees, but um, the scale is wrong, basically is what it comes down to. So skip that part. Now I did trim those out of a silver foil cardstock from Ranger and for the rest of the layers I'm using shades of gray. So I've got a dark, medium, and light gray and then I'm going to use some shimmer right for the most um, forward layers. And this is a real organic process. As you can see, I don't have any sort of template. I'm not really measuring. I'm literally just eyeballing it, lining it up, drawing some rough lines, and um, trimming out some sort of hill. And I'm using foam tape to uh, create the different dimensions. So as I come forward, I have to add multiple layers of foam tape. Now this particular die here from Memory Box actually lines up not too bad. And so I'm able to create um, a bigger strip using, using that die. And so that's what you see me doing here. And again, just applying the foam tape and I will double up where I need to. I've also added a really thin strip behind the trees to, just to give them some stability. I spared you some of that. <laughs> um, and then it's just a matter of figuring out where where I want to place it, where it works best. So here I was a little concerned about where that dark gray piece ended. It's kind of abrupt and how I would get the next layer to to um, to go over top. And so that's what you see me doing here is is trying to mask that harsh, harsh line. Now the next set of dies that I'm using here, these are from Tim Holtz and I didn't realize they were uh, perfectly flat and that they cut out the entire image. So the memory box one doesn't really cut out the bottom so you can determine how thick of a die or how thick of a die cut you want. This actually is a predefined shape. So I trim this out of the um, gray thinking well maybe I could put them in front but that looks really weird. Um, yes you can align them and then I thought oh wait a minute, what happens if I tuck it behind? And I quite like that, only not in that color. So I took the silver foil cardstock again, and you see me trimming out a couple more of those in the, um, in the foil so that we can tuck that behind. And that's what I mean by um, not needing those birch trees there. They really could, could have been gone and you wouldn't notice the seam. And I think adding that extra layer of trees in the back helps masks that um, that the scale is wrong on those trees. So then I was still stuck with this level. What am I going to do? And I found out that if I glued them behind, it didn't look too bad. And I could glue them in such a way that they sort of followed the slope. Not exactly, but they're, you know, it works. So there's a little bit of a lean. So we're just going to, we're just going to say that, you know, these trees grew in a really windy area. And as a result, they grew at a slight slant. That's what we're going with. <laughs> I really like the use of the different shades of gray. The original inspiration, I believe, used almost all white, maybe a little bit of silver. I'm not sure, I can't remember offhand. But I do like the shades of gray. I think it adds a little bit of depth, or I guess the other one had depth too, but it adds depth in a different way. Again, it's just cutting and trimming out more of these just organic, hilly shapes and applying foam behind them. So now I'm moving on to the white shimmer cardstock and now we're working towards making the hills fit within the shadow box so that we don't get that straight edge on the corner. And so I'm very conscious of that as I'm, as I'm laying these pieces down. And again, just 
eyeballing it for the most part or using you know a bend in the paper to kind of kind of mark where I need to trim these down okay so now I'm gonna take the tree dies and I'm gonna cut out a number of these I'm not gonna show me cutting them all out but for each colored layer that I'm going to apply these larger trees I've trimmed out multiples of those so you see the the medium gray there the light gray and then also in the shimmer white and I'm just popping them in wherever I think they look good just tucking them in and behind I am not using any foam adhesive for this um, I think there's enough dimension by not gluing the entire image down just by letting um, just by gluing the base I guess is what I'm saying so then it was time to add the deer and this is like a linen shimmer pearlescent kind of paper that I have it's not even a cardstock so it's very very thin um, it does tend to read a little gray with the way the light reflects off but it is more pearly white but again I like that look it gives um, what's the right word it allows them to be seen on the white shimmer cardstock and then I realized I needed some more trees and some more glimmer and shine so I used some of this glitter cardstock from Stampin Up just to add a few more trees in the foreground and these ones I'm just tucking in wherever I need and I still needed more um, so here's me trimming another one just to kind of balance that out and once I'm happy with the positioning of those I'm just going to glue down the trees here I did think about tucking them in so that it looked you know more like they're buried in the snow but I decided to keep it a little bit simple for the deer I'm just adding a little bit of foam on the bodies and then I'm gluing the feet down well actually I will be gluing the feet down here shortly um, when I initially did this I just used the foam adhesive and their feet stuck up from the the back and I felt that looked a little bit odd that their feet weren't grounded I guess for lack of a better word so I did take like a toothpick and that's what you'll see me doing here um, I did take a toothpick and a little bit of glue and just added those behind their feet and then glued them so that they're attached so there's still dimension in the body but their feet are indeed glued to the hillside and I like how that turned out this deer here I think again from a proportion wise I should have tucked him just a little bit further away or I should have moved him a little bit further he looks a little bit awkward compared to the slope but you know what I'm okay with that and we're just gonna move on so that's gonna wrap up today's video and we are gonna have one more installment left and that's going to be the finishing details and until next time happy crafting